so glad that you made time to join us today for Clark Lindsay's new expert informed virtual series on ageism, everyday ageism. This webinar series is a chance for us to take a look at the practical impacts on ageism in our work. My name is Karen Blatzer and I am the Director of Marketing here at Clark Lindsay and I see some residents on the call today and some leadership members and um, it is open to everybody. So if you enjoy this experience today, please join us for next month and let all of your friends know so they can join us as well. So we kicked off this series last month with Dr. Shannon Mejia. She's the Assistant Professor in the Department of Kinesiology and Community Health at the University of Illinois. Urbana-Champaign, and she presented ageism and the implications of aging into a stereotype. Now, if, show of hands, can you raise your hand and let me know if you were if you heard it last last month? Okay, there are quite a few of you. That is wonderful. Um, so just as we did last month, uh, we will have time for Q and A at the end. So feel free to type your questions in the chat box whenever anything crosses your mind. And at the end of the presentation, um, I will read off those, those questions and we'll have Teresa answer them. So without further ado, allow me to introduce our speaker, Teresa Jones. Teresa Jones is the Associate State Director of Advocacy and Outreach with AARP. Her topic today is age discrimination, ageism in the workplace. In her role with AARP Illinois, her policy focus is on home and community-based services, caregiving, census, and livable communities. She also leads the state's community outreach and education efforts in Congressional District 13, as well as a community presence in Springfield. Teresa has been with AARP Illinois for more than five years and began her career with AARP as a senior program assistant. Teresa has also served as interim ASD for the Metro East St. Louis area for several months. Prior to joining AARP Illinois, she worked for the state of Illinois as the legislative assistant to Senator Jacqueline Y. Collins for 13 years. Teresa is very active in her community as well as a mentor for young mothers at risk with her woman to woman. Mm -hmm. Teresa, we are delighted that you are our speaker today. Thank you. Well, I'm glad to be here, and, and I thank you for inviting me. Um, as it's already been stated, my name is Teresa Jones, and I am the Associate State Director of Advocacy and Outreach for AARP in Springfield and the surrounding areas. AARP, um, if some of you don't know, we are a nonpartisan and a nonprofit um, organization. So. I'd like to start with just telling you a little bit about my advocacy role. Um, I lobby legislators uh, for our issues that AARP feels that are important to the lives of those 50 plus. Well, and to name a few, um, we've introduced and supported and passed multiple pieces of uh, prescription drug legislation that addresses the high cost of prescription drugs. We defend community care programs, which I think is important to you guys especially. Um, so what we do there is when we defended the community care program funding, also while increasing funding for case coordination units, we also press for quality efficiencies within our programs. As I am sure many of you have already heard that we are leading a campaign to support the passage of the graduated income tax constitutional amendment in Illinois. Um, we also led enough is enough campaign to uh, campaign elected officials to address the Illinois fiscal crisis. Um, we've joined Chicago with their local and state legislation effort on uh, people's gas, their modernization project and supported efforts to expand broadband um, to protect consumers against potential higher rates. Um, there's been an extended formula rate structure that we have been fighting against as well. So in my outreach role, things have changed, as we all know, with our COVID-19. <laughs> Where I used to hold fun and educational events in the community, well, now those events are held virtually. One of my most popular events that I host is, uh, believe it or not, it's called Working It Tuesdays. And it's a fitness with flow. It's a virtual Zumba class. So we host cooking shows, art shows, music, live bands, 
even gospel uh, group concerts. Um, and the list just goes on. So for my shameless plug, if you haven't tuned into any of our offerings, um, check out our AARP Illinois Facebook page. So I think you'd be surprised. Oh, and guess what? I speak with various organizations when invited. So that's a perfect segue for the reason that I am here. Let's talk about um, ageism and age discrimination. Well, we know that ageism, it's also called age discrimination but it's when someone treats you unfairly because of your age. Um, it can include the way that older people are represented in the media, which can have a wider impact on the public's attitudes. ARP, well, we're working on that to ensure that experienced workers, that they're judged on their skills and abilities and not just their age. So AARP, we're using our influence and expertise of the 50 plus workforce to fight age discrimination and to make sure employers are more aware of the value of an experienced worker. So we all know that people are living and they're working longer. So experienced workers, we bring expertise, maturity, and perspective. But yet those negative stereotypes and those mistaken assume, uh, assumptions, you know, it just means that older people are often treated unfairly in the workplace. Well, ARP did a study and we found that nearly two in three workers between the ages of 45 and 74, they say that they've seen or experienced age discrimination in the workplace. So according to our survey, nearly 20% of responders said they were not hired for a job because of their age, and nearly 10% said that they were laid off or fired due to their age. You know, discrimination is discrimination. So treating people differently based on age is just as wrong as discriminating against gender or race. Um, it threatens the financial security of older workers. And it, you know, older workers like myself, um, it pushes us out of the workplace and it creates barriers to jobs or promotions that are based on negative stereotypes and outdated assumptions. So that's why ARP is, um, fighting all forms of age discrimination in the hiring process and on the job. So age discrimination, well, it, it seems to receive a, a pass, so to say, in our society, well, compared to other types of discrimination in the workplace. And if this has happened to you, you already know it's much tougher to prove. So I want you to picture a scene that could happen in your city. Um, you're a respected employee, you're, you're in good standing at your company. So for many years you've spent there, you've placed in the top 5% of your performance reviews among 4,000 employees. Suddenly you're demoted. No explanation, your, responsi your responsibilities, now they're reassigned. And you're noticing that these are going to your younger subordinates. Well, unfortunately, this isn't an episode of the Twilight Zone but this is a real example of a workplace age discrimination that came before the Supreme Court. Um, it was called Gross versus FBL Financial Services. And this happened in 2009. So really not that long ago, but um, although that scene, you know, that I just mentioned to you, um, it described the uh, situation of Mr. Gross. It's similar to thousands of cases that are happening across our country today. According to our survey, and as you can tell, I've said survey three times, so AARP does a lot of surveys, but that's what gives us the information that we're able to um, spread out among the communities and let our members as well as um, just the general population know. So about 60% of older workers, they say that they've experienced or witnessed, or witnessed age discrimination in the workplace. So, Court decisions, such as the one that I just mentioned, um, they've narrowed protections for older workers, um, which is unfortunate because it signals to employers that some amount of proven age discrimination is legally allowable. Now, this obviously takes an emotional toll on older workers, but it's also threatening their financial security. And as recent studies revealed, uh, more than 75% of older older job seekers, they cited age discrimination as a significant reason for their unemployment. 
Now, workers are being pushed out prematurely out of long-time jobs, and 90% of the workers never go on to earn as much. So that's a financial hit that follows them into retirement. Um, and we all know that that's one of the things that we're saving for is our retirement. So that's an unfortunate situation that we all need to work on. So as I mentioned, and I'll say this throughout my presentation, that age discrimination in the workplace, like any other kind of discrimination, is just plain wrong. Older workers should have the same rights as every other worker. We should be treated freely, uh, excuse me, fairly in the uh, workplace. And it should be based on our merits and not based on negative stereotypes that um, are actually outdated assumptions. But one reason that ageism, that it still remains an issue, is simply because of our American culture. We live in a youth-obsessed world that actually spent an ex um, $53 billion on anti-aging goods and services in 2019. That's a lot of money. <laughs> Um, and it's, it's a wonder. So, you know, I just say, is it any wonder that our resistance to growing old is shared by companies that employ us? And in meanwhile, the rise of technologies that didn't even exist till many older people were already well into the careers has led to hiring biases, which organizations assume, often wrongly, that younger workers will be more tech savvy. And we, as older workers, well, we sometimes unwittingly reinforce these prejudices. So if you joke about having senior moments, <laughs> or you complain out loud about the kids using the social media rather than the telephone, well, then unfortunately, as well as innocently, we're guilty of fanning a perception that the mindsets and capabilities of old versus young are different. Now, I have to stop here because I, I laugh at that because I know, I know that sometimes I'll say, well, you know, I'm tech not savvy. Well, tech not savvy has nothing to do with my age. It just means I'm tech not savvy. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think a lot of times when we say things like that, uh, you know, you, you do have some of your younger coworkers that will come up and say, well, you do this, da -da 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 -da. and it's like, Okay, good. I'm glad you know that. And it has nothing to do with the fact that they're young. They, these kids came out of the womb learning this, these this type of things, you know. And like I said earlier, um, a lot of this technology, it happened much later in our, into our working careers. So um, I, I believe that that makes a difference. And like I said, it has nothing to do with age. It just has, has to do with the, the times. So I tell people, don't fall for the ageist myths that brought us to this point, that older workers aren't as sharp as younger workers, that were less productive and were not as reliable, and they were not digitally savvy. You are if, when you learn it. So, and as, and people sometimes think older workers are more honorary and difficult. Well, I don't know that that's true. I did, I've seen some young honorary and difficult folks. I just think if that's your personality, that's your personality. So, but surveys and studies, they refute all of these myths. Now, I'm not trying to paint a picture of gloom and doom, but if you haven't felt the pinch of ageism yet, well, trust us. You or someone that you know probably will. Now, if you apply for a job online, now there's a good chance that there's a screening algorithm that automatically will disqualify you because of your age. If you're an older employee, it's likely that you'll bear the share of age-related comments and jokes sometimes. And if you're gunning for a promotion or you're heading into a job interview, you may feel compelled to touch up the gray, dress a bit younger, and act like technology is your best friend. So, and that's because ageism in the workplace, it occurs every day across America. And it's tolerated or even worse, it's unrecognized for what it truly is, discrimination, plain and simple. <clears throat> Excuse me. Age discrimination, it can involve offensive age-based verbal and visual comments, jokes, or even gestures. The harasser can be your supervisor. It could be a, another co-worker. Um, it could be someone who doesn't even work for your employer, you know, like, such as a customer. But what's apparent is that, like any other biases, 
and discriminatory practices, ageism, it takes on many forms. In the workplace, that we found that illegal age discrimination in three main areas. So part of it's in recruiting and hiring when the younger applicants are shown favor simply because of their age. There's the on the job bias, when the older workers receive training opportunities that are fewer and farther between, and as well as promotions, uh, rewards, and sometimes even harassed. Then there's that ugly word, termination. You know, when that company freshens its workplace or it trims the budget by targeting senior employees for layoffs or even encouraging them to retire. So if you guys would just give me one minute here, I have to just take a little drink of water. I've been talking a lot and my mouth is dry. I apologize for that. Better now. Teresa, I have a question for you, and I should have asked this before you started. Do you have a PowerPoint that you want us to share with everybody, share your screen? I have one later coming okay. on. Okay. Yes. okay. Right. Um, there's, there's some things that you can look for if you have, um, if you think you've suffered from the workplace age bias. Um, there's things like coded comments. Um, when your company leaders say younger workers are energetic or they have those fresh faces and uh, new blood. So I always laugh when I hear someone talking about, oh, those fresh faces. And I'm thinking, well, you know, I get up every morning and wash my face and I think it looks pretty fresh. So um, I guess I just mean, you know, it's the new blood. So, you know, an older, and, and then while they tell us that older employees are set in their ways. So that can be an indication of a discriminatory mindset. There's different dealings. Um, so when younger workers are sometimes getting all of the um, opportunities for training, um, there's promotions and, and you know, those juicy pro, uh, projects that some other folks would like to do, but they're like, they wanna give them to the new blood. So if older workers are raising their hands, um, but they're always being passed over, well, that could be a sign of ageism. And that same thing goes for buyouts that are offered only to the older workers. Then there's those wounding words, the um, abusive words that can be enough to create a, a hostile environment. We have ageist, as we all know, those ageist assumptions um, that the comments that older workers don't understand that technology or the social media are simply can't work as hard to end, you know, um, which is funny. I, I actually think that more mature workers work even harder. So, but that's just another discriminatory attitude that's out there. The social segregation, um, you know, when folks are all getting together outside the office uh, and sometimes even with the bosses that they think that skids to uh, better opportunities. But if everyone is being invited or all the younger workers, they're part of that fantasy football league or that happy hour, well, that's a culture of ageism. So those lopsided layoffs, perplexing pretext. So, you know, companies can discriminate, you know, and companies that discriminate, they, they can come up with some pretty creative excuses. So if they demote someone older for poor performance, uh, though the person's ratings have been great, it's a sign of discrimination. So sometimes the, you know, the younger folks, um, they, they may have two or three sales, and now that older salesperson may have done eight, even though they were supposed to do 10. And then all of a sudden you find out that th that's a problem for them. So where the rubber meets the road is in showing that the employer's uh, reason for the action though, but that's not true. So now that we have a few signs that we were looking out for, um, what are some of the things we can do to, to fight back the age discrimination? So there's a few things. Um, talk with your supervisor. Doesn't have to be a formal complaint right off the bat. You know, sometimes the issues, they can just be addressed in an informal conversation. It's important that um, people keep a log. Um, you need to document comments and the actions that you believe that were driven by discrimination, you know, and keep any records, especially those emails. Um, a timeline is always helpful. 
especially to show when the re, re, um, retaliation started, or um, especially to show that if there's retaliation after a complaint has been made. So, but one of the things that people need to make sure of that they do not record conversations secretly if that runs afoul of the state laws or the company policies. You don't transfer the emails or documents to outside parties either, um, or send them to a private email, especially if that violates uh, company rules. A fired worker who can't take confidential information with them when they leave should note the dates of their emails and the names of the documents on the company network. Now that they can request later as a part of any legal proceedings. So make sure you keep it somewhere on the computer. So if you, because you can't take, uh, there's many instances where you can't take your information with you. So, but it will be on your computer. So when they go back and they, they uh, what do they call it when they scan it and uh, they look back at it, you've got your notes on there. And like I said, again, just to reiterate, those can be used as any part of legal proceedings. So um, make sure that you're lodging your complaints with the company. So if, the con if you know, those conversations with those managers don't achieve anything, there's a normally a, an organization's formal complaint process. So whether it's uh, via the human resource manager or um, a higher level manager, just make sure that your concerns and your observations are in writing. Unfortunately, if it gets to be that, you know, extremely bad now, you can go to a lawyer. Um, I would say if you need the lawyer, that's when you go to someone to educate you on your options. So, for example, the filing deadline for age discrimination case at the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission is generally between um, 180 days and 300 days, depending on your, your company's, um, what your company says, your company's policies. So, and this is from the time of the offense. So, though some workers and states have more of a generous deadline, but a lawyer can help any worker decide where it's best and when it's best to file the claim. Um, lawyers usually take these, and this is a good thing, lawyers usually take these cases on a contingency basis. So if you win, the lawyer gets a percentage of any monetary judgment. Um, there's even some law firms, which I didn't know this, but I found this out in my research, there are law firms and organizations that may offer pro bono or reduced price help. So a good place to start, National Employment Lawyers Association website. Um, and that's called NELA, N-E-L-A dot org. And you can search there and you can find a lawyer directory. The um, American Bar Association, it offers among many other services, it has a virtual clinic um, that dispenses free advice. So some of these things that I'm telling you, I know you asked if I had a PowerPoint and I don't, but I do have a document that I can get this information to you just to make sure if anyone needs this. So um, you can submit an inquiry to the EEOC. So. You can normally do this before you decide to uh, file a formal complaint uh, with the EEOC. So, um, and it's called a charge of discrimination. So you can, there's an 800 number that I have that will get you help um, in sending an inquiry through your local office. So, and these complaints, they'll be investigated by the EEOC or by the state and local fair employment practice agencies. So, States that have their own um, investigators and work sharing agreements, they share this information with the EEOC. So now federal employees, now that's a whole different thing. Um, federal employees, they have to use a completely different process. Um, they have to contact the Equal Opportunity Counselor at their agency within 45 days of the discriminatory action. And also, um, I don't know how many of you know, a lot of federal employees, they actually do have and I call it, um, and I hate to say this, but they have dates of expiration. So like police officers and, and some federal um, officers, they can only work up to a certain age limit and then they have to retire out. So these are things that AARP is also working on to combat because, um, you know, age 57 and, and like in some law, for, law enforcement agencies, you have to retire, you know, 57, that's, 
that's a young age to have to think about retiring. So um, there's always the chance that you can consider mediation. Um, or you, like I said, or you can file a lawsuit. But before you can sue, you have to already have filed a complaint with the EEOC. Now they have all these rules and um, it's like if, if you don't hear from them within 60 days, then you can file a lawsuit. <laughs> so, so if you don't get, um, there's a letter and it's called a right to sue letter. So if you get that letter, after you file your complaint, you only have 90 days to take action. So um, it encourages, you know, it, they do that because they're encouraging each side to get together, have a mediation and hopefully find a solution. But in other cases, sometimes it issues the right to sue letter um, to a worker whose case isn't that they're not going to handle. So, and in some cases, the EEOC may file the lawsuit on your behalf. So if an employee feels that they've been mistreated because of their age, um, the EEOC says that they're there to, to enforce the law. Now, we also ask that you support our, what we call uh, powwow, uh, powada, and it's P-O-W-A-D-A. And of course, that's an acronym, A-A-R-P, they love their acronyms. <laughs> so what this is, we're asking people to urge uh, members of Congress to help level the playing field um, for older workers. And by helping to support the passage of, and this is what the, um, what the acronym stands for, is Protecting Older Workers Against Discrimination Act. So this is an important piece of bipartisan legislation that AARP does endorse. Um, and we're hoping that every American gets behind this. So essentially it would restore the burden of proof for age discrimination cases so that they would be on par with other forms of workplace discrimination. So now this act that is supported by AARP, it also would reverse a recent US Supreme Court decision and it will make it clear that the burden is not on the worker um, that when she or he claims that discrimination was a motivating factor um, behind their firing or their personnel decisions. Now, the burden would be on the employer to show that it complied with the law. So unfortunately though, this legislation has been mirrored in Congress since 2009, when that gross decision that we, I talked about earlier, um, when it spurred its creation. So, but it's time to get this um, decision, it's, it's just time to get this moving again. So we're asking that people that you start contacting that your, um, your members of Congress and you ask them where they stand on this bill and you encourage them to support its passage and ARP, we're doing the same. So if we're gonna make any progress against age discrimination in the workplace and protect our financial security and dignity, um, it's time to speak up and to make America's dirty secret public. So that sounded pretty good, that last sentence there, didn't it? It's our America's dirty secret. So, but I mean, but it is true. Um, you know, just, I was just joking there, but it, I mean, actually it's, it's, it's true. Um, it's, it's a hard thing to, for people to prove that it's happening, but we know that it happens. So, you know, I just appreciate the fact that you guys gave me the opportunity to, to talk about some of this. Um, I hope I didn't bore you to death with it. And I hope that I gave you some information that, um, that you can use. So um, I hope it was informative and or helpful. But if you guys have comments, I want to hear them. But before I even do that, I have a little quiz, you know, it's just like, this is like school people. So um, I have a quiz, just a little short couple of things that I'd like to ask you. And then after that, I have a really cute short video. If, if we have time that I'd like to, the video is about two minutes long, if that's okay. So let me move on down here um, with my words that we're not supposed to say with my tech, uh, you know, with my tech savvy self. And uh, let me ask these things. And I have a PowerPoint on this that I'll send to you guys. So they, and we already said that the tell, time, tell signs that your boss may be targeting you because of your age is if you're assigned um, unpleasant duties, or you hear tacky comments about your age, you stop getting raises, or your performance reviews, um, they start tanking. 
So one of my first questions is, the Age Discrimination in Employment Act of 1967, while it protects workers 40 and older from personnel decisions that are based on age, that include hiring, firing, layoffs, promotions, or demotions. Is that true or false? Anyone can answer. True. And you're correct. The act applies to employers with at least 20 workers. So, and it doesn't protect independent contractors or military personnel though. So the deadline to file an age discrimination claim is generally within 180 days from the date of the suspected discrimination took place. Is that true or false? I'm gonna say true. Well, that's correct. Because at eight, that 180 day deadline, it may be extended to 300 days if your state prohibits age discrimination and a state agency enforces it. So the deadline is not extended in cases where only local law prohibits age discrimination. And I have uh, one more. I think everyone knows this one already, but um, which of our federal agencies investigate age discrimination claims? Is it Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, Federal Communications Commission, Federal Bureau of Investigations, or Equal Employment Opportunity Commission? Am I the only one answering? It sounds like it. <laughs> it is the EEOC. Well, bing, 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 that's correct. So if you want to file a complaint, you go to the eeoc.gov. All right. Well, now what I'd like to do, um, I want to show you this video that I have. Um, so bear with me here because I don't know what happened to it. But, uh, you know, I set it up there earlier so it would just be right there. And, of course, it's not right here. <laughs> so I apologize. Just bear with me one minute here while I get it. Isn't this a thing you always dread? Okay, here we go. Sorry, guys. The one thing that you hope never happens. No problem. Do you want me to take this opportunity to, to talk about our next presenter for next month? Sure, sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay, sure thing. Well, next month, please join us for our third webinar on ageism, and it's the last one for 2020. It will be on November 17th at 10 a.m., and the topic will be ageism in healthcare. Our speaker, Alora Lorthe, postdoctoral research associate from the Department of Kinesiology and Community Health from the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. We'll talk about ageism in the healthcare system and how it can influence patients and providers. Dr. Laura Lothre will discuss the many ways ageism, healthcare, and technology intersect. This presentation will overview current research on experiences of ageism in healthcare settings, the impacts of ageism on patient health, and strategies to reduce ageism in healthcare. At the end of the presentation, audience members will be asked to, um, or will be able to, to take away information such as identifying how ageism impacts healthcare, understanding how aging attitudes impact our own behaviors, and problem solving ways to identify and reduce experiences of ageism in healthcare settings. You're also welcome to think about and bring your own experiences to discuss. So that will be next month. How are you doing, Teresa? 
No, I'm doing fine here. I just didn't want it to uh, come across here um, while you were talking. So here we're, I'm going to put this on here right quick. Hold on just one minute. Okay. Okay, we are getting ready to start. There we go. Teresa, is there audio? Because I can't hear it. Well, <laughs> you know, it, it's a funny thing, but it, it does happen. So just thought we'd share. Uh-oh. Uh Sorry about that, guys. Here we go. Okay. So it, unfortunately, that does, you know, happen. I mean, maybe not... Uh, I don't know, maybe it's not as out there like that, but I mean, I'm, there's places you go and, you know, if you're older, you're treated differently, but um, I hope that you enjoyed that little thing. So, uh, and that was put out by AARP actually. So, so you, anybody have, is there any comments, uh, questions, and I'll try to answer them as best I can. I have one, Teresa. You had mentioned at the beginning of your presentation that if you apply online for a job, that there are certain algorithms that already identify you by your age and will just disqualify you. How does that happen unless you, is it because you put when you graduated from college on there or what, what is it? A lot of times, you know, people will put, well, if by chance you put your date of birth on there, um, and that's through resumes as well, but also, like you said, when you graduated from college, when you had your first job, or da 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 da. I know that actually, when I apply for jobs, I just put my, um, I don't put anything above 10 years ago, you know, so um, because actually, I don't think anyone wants to know where I worked 20 years ago. Um, I mean, unless it's just really relevant. But uh, that no one needs to know that you worked for the daycare in 19, you know, 66 or whatever. But you know what I'm saying? If it's, it's, if it's relevant to the position that you're applying for, 
yeah, but but those but I I didn't realize that either. And then I started asking around, and that's the answer. It's it's by the dates that you your work dates. Wow. Yeah. There was something else you mentioned about that if you're experiencing uh, discrimination in the workplace, that you should document everything and keep a log and keep the emails. But you said don't print the emails and don't take them home. Is that what you said? No, no, no. I didn't say don't print them. I, what I said was if these are documents that if you're working for an agency and they tell you that you and it, and it has to do with anything at their work and they're saying that you're not allowed to to take or print. I guess I did say print. And you're not allowed to print out things and take them from your work computer. And there are certain agencies or organizations that will tell you that um, then don't. So <clears throat> excuse me so you have to be careful because then you go to court if you do go to court then they're saying well you know that that's not permissible because you you actually stole that information from your organization's files mm -hmm. but the good thing about it is if you do have it on your system you can ask them you can get a subpoena and you can get that information off of off of your work computer they have to do it then I know they make it difficult, but um, there's, like I said, there's, there's, there's ways to get around that. So, I mean, you get a job, you know, a lot of us get evaluations. You can take your evaluations home and, um, you know, they're, they don't tell you have to leave your evaluations at work. So, um, <clears throat> and some of those, like you said, some of those comments, some of those, those things are put on your, uh, on your um, evaluations and there's proof right there as well. Well, you had a lot of information to share with us today, and, and we are very appreciative of that. Does anybody else have any more questions? Um, if not, I, Teresa, as long as this is okay, we could go ahead and um, share your information with other people. If you have any questions, please contact me, and I will get those questions to Teresa for her to answer. So, sure. Teresa, thank you so much for your time and everybody else for joining us, and we'll see you all next month. Thank you again so much. Thank you, thank you.